it was it was like the old days. It was wonderful to see the black rain playing strong. It was wonderful to see the offense scoring. It was great. It was some good football for sure. And again, just happy to have everybody tune in uh, tonight. As again, we're we're kind of doing this thing solo. Uh, but again, this is just the sixth Timberwolf Night episode. Timberwolf Night in America episode of this season. This is going to be the 128th episode all time Ooh. of Cedar Park football in nine plus seasons, spreading over 11 years. And again, live here from Alzer's Barbecue near the corner of Cypress Creek and Lackalana. Oh, oh, Lackalana was over there at Moot. There we go. We're at Old 183 behind the CVS. And, again, we're going to be here until about 830. We have a Willard of Oz show. We're gonna, so we might trim it down just a little bit. Uh, but, again, uh, we have the offensive line in the house tonight, the Doughboys as they're so called, and uh, definitely coming off of a great performance. So really excited to have these guys in the house again. And uh, just coming off of that stellar performance for the Cedar Park Timberwolves last week, uh, talk about a bounce back week for our Timberwolves. We really needed to see the offense come through and put some points on the board, and boy, did they. It was amazing to see this offense score, uh, kind of like uh, old Will per se. Uh, so again, uh, just happy to have everybody here in the house tonight. Uh, gonna go ahead and kind of recover over some things from uh, last week's game against the Eastview Patriots as our Timberwolves opened up district going 1-0 in district. We're in gold ball season, so this is the time to do it. Uh, but then also going to have the offensive line on, on air here in a little bit to, to just kind of go over uh, what this offensive line room, room looks like and then also go ahead and preview uh, the game we have coming up week going on the road to College Station. And so just kind of uncovering some stats from last week. We actually avoided tying the program's longest losing streak of five games. So really happy that the boys were able to pull that back. And the team's per-game rushing average is exactly at 100. This is the best number on the current season, but worst number in the season in program history. Now, last week as well, the team got 168 yards on the ground, a very healthy 5.25 yards per carry. And both numbers are the highest of the season. So the offensive line really coming through big time last week as we really needed to establish that run game. Also, you can't tell the story of last week without talking about that black rain. And the black rain held the Patriots to 68 rushing yards. And that's by far the lowest opponent of a total this season. And they also had a highly recruited running back, junior Jalen Edmondson, 11 carries for a whopping you guessed it, seven yards. My goodness, that's insane. Uh, also, Eastview ran 59 plays for a total of 234 yards, and four of those plays, Steve, had 141 of those yards. So on their other 55 plays, 1.7 yards per snap. That's unbelievable. And defense only al allowed three points. That's right. The special teams that came up big, and the, and the defense uh, really, really did come up big. Now, 24 of their 59 plays went for one, zero, or negative yardage. And if you've been a Timberwolf faithful, that's what we've been tracking uh, for many seasons is how many times a play goes for virtually nothing. And, I mean, 24 out of their 59 last week, just an unbelievable stat by the Black Rain. Now, we were about to go down by the unmentionable stat. And, and for those of our Timberwolf faithful that don't know what the unmentionable stat is. We can mention it here, but on game day, if the Timberwolves are up by 14 points, it's virtually impossible for us to lose that game. Same thing on the flip side. If we're down 14, you can almost maybe write that one off. But our Timberwolves on the brink of an unmentionable stat on the other side, and that was just in the first quarter, the entire game changed. Brady Elford had an 85-yard scoop and score, and then the blocked punt touchdown for Eastview a few moments later only delayed the inevitable. After going down 14-7, Cedar Park outscored them 52-3 the rest of the way. Unbelievable job by our Black Rain for staying in it, as well as that offense. Now, Aiden Art kind of started slowly. He completed only one of his first six passes for only two yards and an interception. But after that, Totally rewrote the script. Went 15 for 20, 206 yards, and two touchdowns. And, and throwing a longs total, it was 16 for 21 for 263 yards 
and three scores. I'm telling you, if you had ARP on your fantasy team, last week was the week to put him on your starting lineup. Also last week, Carter Well, junior wideout, produced his first 100-yard receiving day with eight catches, 118 yards, and a score. Now, granted, that was not just the receiving uh first yard or not just Carter Wells first 100 yard receiving day it was also the receiving cores 100 yard first day so big outing for those junior wideouts and and this is a crazy stat too now I don't know if you if, if you saw this but towards the end of the game we got a, a, an opportunity to get some of those twos into the game and Aiden Long backup quarterback senior with his single throw from 57 yards went for a tutty and at that moment at this moment, I should say, Aiden Long has the highest ungoverned NCAA passer rating of any player in Cedar Park history with 900.8. My gosh, put that in your juice box and you can finish the rest. But again, we'll pull out the form formulatic go governor valued used by the NCAA. And the reason is, is that it's stupid. It, it, it ensures that no one can ever have a higher number than some certain numbers that I can't recall. Uh, so some guy who, say, went 12 for 19, 231 yards, and four touchdowns gets the same rating as a guy who went 14 of 16 for 350 yards and five touchdowns. And so we'll go ahead and, and put that governor aside and out of the formula for our charts to show an honest comparison. And again, Aiden Long at least is a real quarterback. The five players immediately under him on the charts are all wide receivers or punters who threw one pass or two passes on trick plays to succeed. So the program's highest rating for a real quarterback, many throws is Ryder Hernandez in 2020 when he had a 196.34 quarterback rating. Max Sexton has our highest career passer rating at 170.62. And again, Ryder is second at that 164.62. Aiden Arp currently at a 107.46. I'm telling you, the junior takes care of the rock does a great job of taking care of the football. So again, a lot to cover over from that last week, but it really starts with the Doughboys uh, that are in the house here tonight at Alzer's Barbecue. And we're gonna go ahead and start kind of rolling through these guys because we got a lot of them in here. And so we're gonna go ahead and start with the Young Williams. Davo, come on up first. And we're gonna go ahead and let him saddle up into that mic right here, Mr. Weems. You can still stick close. All righty, so first in the hot seat, Mr. Davis Williams. I heard you have an older brother. Yes, sir. Okay, and so who is the bigger brother? He is, but I'm only like an inch away. Okay, that's what I'm saying, but you still play bigger, right? Yeah, a little bit. Okay, of course. Now, I mean, just talk about last week for the offensive line. I mean, you guys really got it done and paving the way for Tyree Nicholson, Aiden Arp even on some scrambles. How did that feel as an offensive group? Um, just felt great to just see our running backs and quarterbacks succeed, get in the end zone, get first downs. And it's, it just really gives us life, um, gives us, like, just – the ability to tempo and just do what we do in practice, and it's just great. It just opens up the whole offense for sure. And so I got to ask, now I played slot receiver back in the day, so I like to keep the jersey clean, but in the trenches, do you like to run block or pass block better? Uh, definitely pass block. Oh, definitely okay. Pass block. That's right. You like to be that bouncer, stand oh, back, yeah. get him out the club. I like that. Oh, yeah. I like that. So, Davis, you're a sophomore or junior? I am a junior. Wow, Okay. Um, so still a long way to go for this team. What do you think this offensive line needs to work on as a core? Um, for at least me, uh, run blocking. Um, for the offensive line, I think it's mostly just busted plays and um, just knowing the assignments. But that will all get fixed with just time and experience because we do not have a lot of experience on the O-line. So. Yeah, it's still a, a collectively young group and yourself coming back next season. Uh, yeah. I know it's kind of far on the horizon, but do you have any sort of plans of what you're wanting to do after high school? Um, Probably just go to college like my brother, play football there. I mean, hopefully you're not gigging him, are you? Are you gigging him? I am gigging him. Oh, come on. He drank the Kool-Aid. <laughs> he drank the Kool-Aid. Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Um, and Dave, any shout-outs tonight? Shout-out my mom, my dad, my brother, 
the O line. Ooh, the Doughboys. The Doughboys. Okay, okay. That's shout cool. out, shout out, Alzers. For sure. Shout out Alzers for sure. We've got some great queue. If you're hanging around the Cedar Park area and you're you're driving around, why don't you just come on and stop by, hang out with me and the Doughboys. We're having fun. Awesome. Well, yes, Davis, I really do appreciate it. Uh, really excited to see your growth this year so far. I've got a Thank long you. way to go. A couple tough road games coming up. Yes, sir. Thank you. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and pass it off to the next offensive lineman. Who's next in the hot seat? Oh, come on, Brock. Bring it down this way. Come on, Brock. Next up is going to be, okay, I, I say Brock the only time. What first name? I need a first name. Jackson Brock. Jackson Brock, number 11? Yes, sir. On the roster, number one in your heart. And, and tell me, Jackson, have you always been in the trenches? Uh, I actually used to be a quarterback freshman and sophomore year, and then I got big enough to where I just got thrown underneath the bus to the gotcha. tight end spot. I got gotcha. you. And so tell me, what it, what is your favorite part about being a tight end? Uh, just the fact that. One play I could be blocking you. The next play I could be catching a ball. And just it's kind of unpredictable. So right. And so you're a senior this year. Yes, sir. I got you. And so, what is your favorite moment as a Timberwolf thus far? Oh, uh, that's a hard question. Hmm. I'll say probably that state year that we went. Oh, it was just about a bunch of great guys. I love to be around them and really like brought me into the team. So that would have been your sophomore year? Yeah, I was sophomore year. Wow. So, I mean, you got to go. I mean, once the playoffs started, you got to travel with yeah. the team and, and go throughout those experiences. So what was it like being in Jerry World? Uh, I didn't actually go. I, I switched over to basketball. Oh. I, was, I was a two-way player back then. Okay, okay. So what position are you playing on the hard paint? What what position are you? I was a small forward. Okay, small forward. So I, I'm back in the – so is that like a three? Yes, yeah, three. Oh, okay. So you're out on the wing. You got a little shot? A little bit. I got you. Now, now again, kind of like what I was asking Davis, a, a couple big road games coming up. Uh, and, and coming off of that big win to start district, what do you think that this unit needs to collectively work on heading into these two weeks? Uh, I'd just say communicating and really getting to that second level and securing the box, and I think we'll be just fine. Yeah, absolutely. Now, being a senior, um, I know academics are, you know, highly, you know, you know, thought about at Cedar Park. So, any plans for after high school? What you want to do? Uh, I'm actually going to the oil field after high school because my grades, uh, let's just say, aren't really cutting it for college. That's okay. Boogity boogity boogity. <laughs> I'm right there with you. It's all good. Um, well, that's really awesome. Get right into the workforce, and again, everything that you're learning from the Cedar Park football program, you can carry on with you for a lifetime. And that's just speaking from experience. Yes, sir. Um, so, a couple big weeks. Got to keep these guys focused and really make sure you guys show up ready to get off the bus, ready to play some football. Yes, sir. Awesome. So we'll go ahead and send up next. Is it Lucas Wilson? Uh -huh. <laughs> Dude, how? I mean, your first, your big TD got called back. We got to talk about that first. That's the first thing I want to talk about. Okay. Lucas Wilson, again, number 87. He's also number one in your heart. So yes, go ahead sir, and yes, tell sir. me. I mean, you got loose on that touchdown. Yeah. I mean, was that like a drag route? Where it was a slip back? route, yeah, from okay. the H-back, yeah. Okay. And, and, I mean, how defeated were you when they called that? Well, I, mean, I can't on. really blame him because I pointed at the corner to <laughs> tell Carter to block him. I just didn't think he was going to absolutely kill him, but <laughs> it's whatever. I'll that get it was, back. That was an unbelievable peel back block. It was, it was. Ten yeah. years ago when I was playing, that would have been legal. So yeah. you're all good. Yeah, it was, it was a good block. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It was still cool to. So tell me, Lucas, uh, have you always been on the offensive side of the ball? Yeah, always. That's always. always been my favorite part. Love that. Got the rock. Like to make something happen with it. I yep. got you. Um, and, and so, being, a, are you a senior this year? Not a junior. A junior? Yes, sir. My goodness, one of the many coming back next year. So then, talk about this. I mean, your your group that's going to be seniors yep. next year. There's a lot of leadership. They're getting a lot of reps right now. Yes, Speak sir. About that. Uh, I just think the this year for the juniors, it's a really like a learning experience. Just getting a bunch of varsity experience and then pushing for that, that ring next year is really the main goal. Yeah. I mean, and I'm telling you, last year went 5-5, five and five and we were a matchup nightmare in the playoffs. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. That's what happens with championship programs. You, you schedule these tough non-district games, and, and then you take care of business during district yes, to give sir, yourself a fighting chance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so any plans, uh, you know, for yourself going in, you know, into the college years? Have you even thought about that? Uh, a little bit. I say we see how senior year goes, and then so I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a, I'm active on Twitter, and I'll be seeing you going to all these camps over the summer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. And, and, and so, uh, who inspired you to play football? 
r really just probably my dad. He played D1 basketball, so I've always wanted to play college. I just never really. I used to play basketball, but hung up those hung up those shoes. Uh, I focused more on football. Just the more family environment of football really drew me towards wanting to keep playing it. That's awesome, man. Well, again. I mean, you're going to get loose. You're yeah. going to get in the end zone. Yes, We're going to get in yes, the sir. fun zone and have a lot of fun. Yes, sir. And again, See me with like that a, chain on. Just like I told Brock and Williams, I mean, these next two road games, this yes, is sir. where it's going to get tough. And yeah. This so, is so – I mean, it's just so happy for, for you guys to get that win last week. Yes, sir. Especially doing it by establishing it on the ground. Yeah. Um, and it, you'll really see who Cedar Park is these next two weeks. Y'all going to find out. Ooh going to find out. Now, going back to this game last week against the Patriots, what worked well for this offensive line and why y'all were able to do so well? I think everything really worked well, as y'all can see. I mean, we scored 59 points, so there's not really much that went wrong. But I think really the combos, the combos in the interior offensive line really worked really well. Give the shout-out to the big boys in the middle. They really they got it going for us. Yeah, absolutely. And it was just exciting to see you guys get back to Cedar Park football. Yeah. Um, really happy with how you all persevered through non-district. Yes, sir. Uh, because everything starts 0-0 zero and zero now. Yeah, the 6A competition at the start really, as you all saw, really got us prepared for the district that we have ahead of us. And we've done that for a decade, yeah. ever since I was playing. And that's the thing about teams in the past is if you can make it through the non-district with no injuries, yeah, you got a hell of a chance. Like Coach Q has always told us we're not going to schedule any bums for the first three games because we, we're, we're going to have to figure out who we are the first three games and then really get rolling in the district. We're not going to face anybody harder than Vanegra for the whole year. So, oh, Don't give them that love. Do never, never, give, <laughs> never give little brother that much love. That's okay. That's okay. I'm going to let that one slide. Uh, but, again, Lucas Wilson uh, really has done a lot for Cedar Park's offense. You'll see him starting at that H-back position, kind of motioning back and forth on that offensive line and really paving the way. But don't sleep on him. He's going to get loose back yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Woogity, woogity, woogity. All right, let's go ahead and get Nambo Thank up you. here. Let's go, Nambo. You the man, Luke. Next up is number, I mean, last year or 92. What number are we this year? Uh, 57. 57? Yeah. What's up with that? Did you like 92 or 57 better? Well, at the beginning of last year, I started with actually 99. And then when I had to move positions, I went to, they just assigned me 57. And so I kind of just stuck with it from there. I mean, if, if you're a kid of this generation, you better go ahead and get your necklace made with the number 57 on yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Oh, That's, come on. Let's pump the brakes on that a little bit. Yeah. So, let's so, so tell me, Aaron, again. Last year really came out. You're a junior this year? Senior. Senior. My gosh. Blink your eyes. I'm going to start crying. Uh, but, again, you really got your start on that defensive side of the ball. Talk about the transition going from defensive line to offense. Uh, I want to be honest. It kind of, like, it was very useful playing defense because I kind of know what, like, I could use to beat an offensive lineman. And, like, as an offensive lineman, I know what beats me, so I could kind of work on that to try. It's like the Spider-Man meme just pointing at themselves. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's really cool. Um, and, and so, being a senior, uh, talk about what you got planned next, or, or what you're what you're what you're planning on. Uh, for sure, going to college. I'm not too sure exactly where, but uh, I would say since I'm not sure, I wanted to like major in like business or something, and then have a minor in something else. That's cool. Yeah. We need a lot of businessmen out there. Yeah. We need those. We need those to make the world go round. I'm in sales. You'd be really good at sales. I'm just saying. Um, so, again, going into this, these next two weeks, kind of speak about, you know, what are some offensive keys for this offensive line? Uh, I think we really need to, like, fire off the ball more and communicate more with what our jobs are and just, like, be more aggressive off the ball. Okay. Now, last question, and this is pretty serious. Of this offensive line group, now, granted, 10 years ago, oh, my gosh, I think it's, like, 12 years ago. When we started practice, we started that whole shindig where we're doing it in the morning before it gets really hot. We're smart. That's why we do things. Who is the last one ready outside, out, outside on the field in the mornings? Uh, I'd say either Brock or Parr. Brock or Parr? Yeah. Who's the last one ready to go in the mornings? Either Brock, Brock. or – That's because he's a hybrid. He's that tight end. He's not even a real doughboy. He ain't even really about that life. I got gotcha. you. Well, very good. Um, it, it's been really exciting to watch your development throughout your high school career, um, just seeing you get after it on the defensive side of the ball, but then just seeing how you can be utilized on the offensive side uh, just kind of speaks to your personality. You're just kind of a 
wherever you can be needed on the team, that's where you're going to be. Yeah. All righty. Well, send someone up next. Who, do, who else do we got up here? Uh, I'd say send up some White Valiente. <laughs> oh, <laughs> give me that sophomore blood. Okay. And uh, Mr. Wyatt had a bit of a video that might have gone viral this off season. I did. Oh, did yeah. you? I did. Okay, so tell me about that. What were you What were you putting on that rack? What were you putting on that bar? Five hundred pounds. Five hundred, Mr. Weems. I can't even think about that. I would get a cramp. <laughs> I hear you. So how many How many plates is that? Are we doing? That's five plates and a two point five. Five plate. Oh, and a two point five. Hey man. Bruh. Hey man. Bruh. I wasn't planning on maxing that day. Oh, okay. I like that. Um, so. I can relate to you as being a younger brother oh. of coming up in the program. I had two younger brothers, not like the Alziers, not five. So <laughs> you got me beat on that part. Uh, but talk to me about how, I mean, Cole was such a catalyst on this team, especially when we went to state, um, was just a big reason of why that offensive line moved. Talk to me about watching your brother and kind of picking up where he left off. Well, he just left a really high what we say standard now for me to and it really drives me it really drives me and seeing his name up on the board it just I want to beat it every day I walk into that weight room and I just want to be better than he is yeah uh, no, no better way to put it you just want to be better than big I, brother I want to be better than Cole <laughs> now now even with I mean just the offense collectively it's a younger group yes so so talk to me about the experience that y'all have gone through through non-district to getting that first win last week so cedar ridge was one of many of our first games on varsity especially for me it was a big eye opener and it really just set the tone for the season i, I mean coming off the loss we all wanted just to win and coming into district we knew that we had to be one and oh going into district too and we all are experienced now, and there's no excuses. No excuses. Carrying on to this season. I love that. Now, I mean, that's a big transition going from your yeah. freshman year football to it varsity is. the very next year. Talk it about is. that game speed difference. Games. Oh well, game speed is a lot different. I mean, we can run maybe five plays in two minutes in freshman, but five plays in a minute in varsity is slow. The pace is a lot quicker and just the just the crowd is different too it's so much louder they're more into the game it's different speeds everything yeah. everything is different a hundred percent now a big offensive line group here got a lot of got a lot of dogs in here mm -hmm. of this offensive line group who's the best dancer dancer Manir Alzer. I have a story Manir? to tell I have a story to tell you. Oh, let's go. Tune it up. Mooney showed up late to practice one day. And Ooh. after practice, after practice, we had him do punishments. Isaac. <laughs> every, was it five yards? Every five yards, he had him drop down, start doing the wob, start just throwing it back. Yes. And, I mean, he was going at it, moving. From what I've been told, Isaac said that is the best he's seen. He's seen. Oh. I mean, shout out to Isaac for giving some great punishment. That's great <laughs> stuff right there. But shout out Alzir, man. I mean, coming through. I mean. I mean, being the best dancer, that can take you a long way. <laughs> uh, well, again, Wyatt, on Friday nights, where can people find you? Are you on? Are you at right? Guard, I'm at center? right guard. Right guard. Right guard. Number and 50. Your number? 50. Number 50. Carrying on the Valiente number. That's right. Going to carry it on. Mainly um, because my again. mom didn't want to pay for new shirts. <laughs> Very smart. Shout out Mama and Daddy <laughs> Valiente on that one. Yes, sir. Any shout outs tonight? My mom, dad, brother, Alzers, offensive line, Luca especially. Hey. Almost got his first TD. Dude, I'm so telling close. you. And it wasn't even your fault. I no. mean, that was unreal. Um, well, again, Wyatt, thank you so much. Thank uh, you. You've got a lot of experience that you're you're really developing really quickly, especially yes, being on this offensive line. So definitely looking for your leadership as we continue on. Yes, sir. All right. Give me Barksdale. Uh-huh. All righty. Next on the mic, Isaac Barksdale, number 56. 
three, number 53. And is this your third year on varsity or second? Yes, it's my third. Golly, a senior captain. That happened quick. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so so tell me then about this offensive line. What what does it take to be an offensive lineman? Um, I'd say definitely just like intensity as far as coming to practice every day. Just You're just going to be in the trenches. You're going to work hard on practice, and you're going to be – certain level of mad. Right, a certain level of mad. I can get behind that. Now, one of my favorite things about playing at Cedar Park is that half of the time your best opponent is going to be who you're playing in practice. 100%. Half of the time you're going to get a better look from the Black Rain than you will on Friday night. So who do you have on one-on-ones at Cedar Park? Come on, I throw them out Castro, there. Castro, number 94, nose guard. Castro? Every day. Every day. Ooh. <laughs> Okay, but on the flip side, who's got your number sometimes in one-on-ones? Oh, definitely uh, Castro. I mean, it's a 50-50 oh. battle every day. Oh. It, 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 who's having a good day, who's not? <laughs> Michael Scott, how the turntables have turned. Very good. Yeah. Understand that one. And so, I mean, talk about the highs and lows uh, of your Cedar Park career and now being at this point now where you're sitting undefeated in district with that first win, but a couple big road games coming up. Um, definitely my uh, sophomore year, you know, 2020 went, you know, always stay, you know, lost it in Ryan, but I mean, definitely a one of a kind experience, but, and last year, being a starter finally, but a little bit disappointed, still hungry, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I mean, and that was the thing about last year's team, y'all went five and five, you found a way to go on the road against Buta Hay or Buta Johnson. And, I mean, I'm slapping on that <laughs> glass when y'all win in overtime. I mean, that was one of the best moments uh, from last season for me. Definitely. Uh, but talk to more about what this offensive line, you know, needs to do uh, in the weeks coming forward. What what can you guys improve on? Um, definitely red zone. You know, putting those long drives together, finishing in the red zone, and just execution. It's across the board as an offense for mm -hmm. sure. And, and so on Friday nights, we'll find you on at left guard. Center. Cent oh, got the rock in his hand all the time. That's what I'm talking about. Yes. Um, well, again, talk about this big offensive lineman group. Got a lot of guys in here. <laughs> of this group, who would you say is going to – would make a good run on American Idol? Who's the best singer? Is it bad if I say myself? <laughs> uh, don't, don't, but you got to give me 15 seconds. I need a 15 second sound bite. No. Come on, no, man. We can do no, some acapella no. with you. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I hear you. Um, so, being a senior, any plans going on next year? Um, all right, now I just actually submitted my application for uh, Tarleton State this morning, so. There you go. Yeah. And that, I think Cole Viente is there right now. He is. Okay, okay. Very cool. Any, any, field that you want to study in or anything uh right now i'm in uh my, my major is agricultural mechanics nice yeah very good uh well again it, it just like everybody else it's been a pleasure to watch your career watch you develop from that sophomore year all the way to being a senior captain uh keep pushing these guys 100%. They, they're gonna need to keep feeling that push not just from the coaches but from you guys as well awesome send up my next victim par par Come on, Park. Come on down. Come on down. Again, thanks for hanging out with us. We're here at Alzer's Barbecue at South Old 183 in Cypress Creek, just behind the CVS. Come hang out with us and have some good barbecue. And we're talking to the Doughboys tonight. We're having a lot of fun doing it. And now we have up next is Par. I need a first name. David. David. David Par. Senior? Yes. Sick. So talk to me about your favorite experience as a Timberwolf to this point. I think my favorite experiences have just been after the games. After the games? Yeah. I got gotcha. you. That was the best part. I got gotcha. you. And, and so have you always been an offensive lineman? I played defensive line sophomore year and then offensive line junior and senior year. I got gotcha. you. And, and, and so just kind of talk about what it means to be an offensive lineman to you. It means it's always protecting the quarterback and the running back. And a lot of times it's, it can be pretty challenging, especially on long drives. So that's 
That's where it's most important. Absolutely. Um, so if you had to, to uh, on that offensive line, where, where are you a tackle, guard? Where are you at? Left guard. Left guard. Yeah. Oh, you in that interior life. Yeah. So, I mean, going back to Cedar Park football, you guys have the ability to do inside run. Some of your best looks are going to be from the black rain. Who, who is somebody that when you line up against them in inside run, you know you got them right now? Um, Come on, call him out. This is the time uh, to do it. Henry Wicker. I okay, guess. Wicker. Wicker, you're on the watch list. You're on the watch list. Totally get that. Um, so then moving forward next year, you're, I mean, this year being your senior year, have any plans for after school? Uh, I, I want to be, become an engineer. Oof. A lot of math. Are you yeah. sure? You yeah. like math? That's it's, it's all right. Ah, that's okay. I was more of the arts, if you can't tell. <laughs> Understood. Um, so, again, uh, just looking forward to this next week. Um, is there anything in particular that this offensive line is, is looking to improve from last week? I think mainly our, our combos. It's going to be pretty important this week. Combos, not the ones you find at the gas station either. I hear you. Uh, well, again, thank you so much. Uh, any shout-outs tonight? Uh, Shout-out the O-line and tight ends. O-line and the tight ends. Brock getting some love. Let's go. I feel that. I feel that. Uh, well, again, David Part number on Friday nights. 60. It's number 60. All right. Everybody look for number 60 and yell out, go par. All right. Par smash. Par smash. I love that. Oh, I'll definitely incorporate that on the podcast, on the broadcast. All righty. So it looks like we've got one more left. Is it a little lousier? Let's go ahead and bring him up. It's crazy. It's a little lousier, but you're probably one of the bigger ones. Dude, that's awesome. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Come on now. Come on now. All righty, so first first and last name? Manir Alzer. Manir Alzer. And the last one, or is there another I'm couple the that we don't know about? I'm the last one. Okay, okay. Um, and, again, we're here live from Alzer's Barbecue and uh, the Alzer family. We actually interviewed uh, Mr. Alzer and, and uh, Omar, Omar. Uh, a couple weekends or a couple weeks ago. And, and, again, just having five boys come through this program, what's it mean to you for you to be the caboose coming up at, at the end? Well, I just like I'm thankful for this opportunity. My brothers have led me too, so. Yeah, and, and so out of your brothers, who's the most competitive? Most competitive, I say Tamer. Tamer, yeah, defensive guy, punter. Yeah. He's a just a yeah, just like that little spring body. I hear you. Um, and so, are you a junior? I'm a yes, sir. I'm a junior. Junior, so going to be able to come back next year. And what position are you playing on that offensive line? The interior. Interior line. Yes, sir. Left or right, doesn't matter. Doesn't You're matter. ambidextrous. Yes, sir. I hear that. I hear that. Um, so, again, about this offensive line group, I mean, you guys are holding each other accountable all the time, uh, always got each other's back. Who's the best liar out of this group? Best liar? I'd, I'd say Davo. Davis Williams. Davis? A Williams? I'm going to have some words with Mr. Carey on that one. That was my government <laughs> teacher back in the day. I'm going to have some words on that one. <laughs> They don't let you go into A and M like that. I'm just kidding. No, they definitely let all the liars and cheaters in there. Um, totally understand that. <laughs> um, so again, Manier, um, you know you're getting a lot of experience right now, but this offense is still pretty young. So kind of talk about kind of the excitement that you guys are having, knowing that you're getting experience now, but you're still developing into another senior year. Oh uh, yeah. So we're getting our experience now. So next year we'll be like be able to just come out of there because most of our varsity is just mainly juniors. And and I really want to ask you this because you've been through so many years of being a part of the Timberwolf family with your brothers. What is your favorite moment as a Timberwolf? My favorite moment was probably being a ball boy at the state game. Wow. All right. Now, what year was that? Um, was that the 15 state the, game? The 15. Oh, my gosh. The undefeated state championship. Very cool. And so what grade were you in around that time? Uh... Maybe if I'm a junior now, third. Wow. Third. Just a young whippersnapper out there being a ball boy. That's amazing. And to see it come full circle. Um, so your offensive line, you guys have really done a lot of work, you know, going through non-district and had a great game last week really establishing that run game. What guys? What can you guys do to carry that into this next week? Just fire off the ball and be more, like, 
uh, communication. Yeah. Put out communication. Shoot, everything starts with com good communication. I can tell you that firsthand experience. Uh, well, again, uh, thank you so much. Um, number on Friday nights? 62. 62. And any shout-outs? Shout-out Alzers, my hey. mom, and the uh, O-line. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. Next up, we're going to bring up Coach Barksdale. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Bo Barksdale. Again, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. We're here at Alzers Barbecue. And now got offensive line coach Bo Barksdale. What year is this in, in the Cedar Park community now? Uh, eight. Year eight? Year eight. Lord have mercy, that happened quick. I'm old. And, and now your boy being a senior? Yeah. Talk to me about that, what it's like coaching him on varsity now. I mean, this year in his senior year, that is. Well, it's always a dream, you know, to be able to coach him when he comes in senior year and uh, to get him in this program and be in a situation we're in. Uh, he couldn't ask for anything better in this community. Um, and I'm doing every second of it. Yeah. it. It truly is amazing to, to be able to watch you guys do that. And, again, a couple of years ago with Coach Absick and Gunner, just that, that is truly special. Um, and, and, again, the non-district was a little tough, not being around the bush. No, it was tough. And, and what did you guys learn most about this offensive line during that non-district schedule? Well, I think I've seen your leadership showed out. I mean, with uh, Nambo and Isaac leading the way, they were that voice saying, this is what's going to happen, this is what it's going to be like. And then the guys kind of seeing as they play through that three weeks, like, hey, yeah, they know what they're talking about. You know, we got to believe and follow these guys. Uh, I think it brought that leadership to the front, for, to the forefront of the O-line. Um, I think it made a emphasis on communication and can't take any plays off up front. No. Or you're exposed, yeah. you know, and I mean, it was plain and simple, you know, and it's just we got down those red zones in those three games and we had a bust here, bust here, bust here, and it just can't do that, you know, and I think uh, anything out of that three-week schedule with O-line, it said, hey, we all got to be communicating, we got to be on the same page, and we got to follow our leadership and those voices. Well, and I've had the boys do a lot of self-reflection. Mm -hmm. I've asked them a lot, you know, what can we do going into these next two weeks? Because, I mean, going back-to-back -back weekends in College Station, I don't <laughs> care how you put it, that's rough on anybody. It is Whoever rough. made that schedule, I need to have a few words with them. Uh, random draw. Oh, my gosh. No, ra <laughs> nothing random about that. <laughs> but having these guys, you know, figure out what they need to work on, what does this group do well? Uh, I think the chemistry has come along more than anything. Uh they do have fun together. They enjoy being around each other. They enjoy working together each day. That, number one, is the first thing. And if you got that chemistry, everything else is going to come. You know, and that's why in this community we do so much together with everybody. It builds that chemistry, and it has with this group. And that's their strength right now. And the communication, as you saw last week, is coming on. You know, and I saw guys, if you go back and watch film, I'm seeing guys that were not doing it for three weeks that are now all of a sudden communicating. It's, I mean, like I said, it's coming on. And but chemistry number one. And have you always coached offensive line since you've been at Cedar Park? Yes. Okay. And before that, have you always been an offensive lineman coach? I've been offensive line my whole career. Assistant, you know, small school, you do both. So assistant D-line at small school, then head O-line on the other side of the ball. And then I was offensive coordinator for four years out in Florence. So, yeah, I've been a part of the O-line for most of my career, yes. And so who inspired Bo to be involved in football like you are? It was funny because my influence came from my high school coach. He was actually my high school D-line coach. Uh, I was at a 5A, Mesquite High School. I was starting on the O-line, but it was a lot like this group. We were thin in O-line and, and D-line that year, and so I was starting and also number two at the three technique. Well, our three technique now, I was actually starting both ways for four weeks. And anyways, he was also my head throwing coach in track, but he influenced me. Uh, real heavily. Good Christian guy. Uh, you know, he cared about us, and I was around him all four years. Uh, and he, he influenced me going into coaching. That's awesome. You know, and he, just, he inspired me through and through. That's great. So. And so year eight at Cedar Park, how many years coaching now? This is 21. Holy cow. Actually, 22, actually. Whoa. Yeah, been doing a while. Yeah, happened quick. <laughs> yes, it does. It goes <laughs> by fast. It goes by fast in your head, but your body just sure does feel it, though. Well, and, and, I mean, they've talked about communication, uh, you know, getting to the next level. Uh, 
other than those two two things that the guys have pointed out on themselves, is there anything collectively that they really need to focus on? You know, coming into the, the to the latter part of the season, just getting that uh, consistency, and that's why I challenged them last week. Was after the games, like, can we reproduce what we did tonight? Because mm-hmm. last week we dominated up front. Can we reproduce it week in and week out? You know, you got the chemistry. You learn to communicate. You know the X's and O's. Can we come out here and physically do it week in, week out, every Friday night? And that's what it's going to take. I mean, I'm ready to put some pads on right now. I'll yeah. do it for you as well. Yeah, I'll be down, awesome. down there too. <laughs> um, well, again, uh, you know, I played for Cedar Park, graduated in 2011, um, and, and seen you for so many years. Mm-hmm. And it, it is a blessing to, to have you here in the Cedar Park community. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and it, it's awesome to see Isaac now. Uh, playing a senior year as a captain and, and really dominating that offensive line. It, it really just it comes full circle. It's really awesome. It does. It's, it's, it's cool because I think back to, like, these nights we spent so many nights going, eating, like, places and killing time to go to the junior high games and all that seventh, eighth grade year. And now here it's going full circle. Now it's the Friday nights and seniors. So it's been it's been a blessing for us as parents as well mm. so it is that, nice. that hits a few heartstrings now being a parent now Craig oh yeah my daughter it, just turned three your day's coming it's all about being a princess so we have fun playing princess yeah. and I'm sure Isaac played a lot of princess when he was a little kid too <laughs> now he gave his princess sister hell oh like okay it. there you go there you go <laughs> good cover good cover dad <laughs> yeah. um, well again you have an assistant coach in the house I do coach Perkins Coach Coach Perkins. Perkins. Yes, Jimmy Perkins. Jimmy Perkins. Don't it's let your time to shine. Don't let him tell no college stories about me now, okay? Oh, uh, y'all go way back to them college we days? We do, we do. Ooh. <laughs> now, where was that? Uh, Howard Payne. Howard Payne. Yes. Oh, I want to hear all about the HP days. <laughs> Thank you again, Coach. Right. Thank you. So, next up now is Coach Jimmy Perkins. Are we talking roommates back in the day? No, not roommates, but we were on the old line together. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're one of them dogs from the beginning of the of, of the day, too. Yeah, so Coach Barksdale and I have known each other for a long time. And, and how many – is this your first year at Cedar Park? It's my first year at Cedar Park, 18th year overall. And, and previously, where did you come from? Uh, Houston area. I was – my last school, I was at Cypress Ranch. Okay. And then before that, I was at Fort Bend and then a little bit in HISD and started out in East Texas working my way around and – trying to get up to the big time so what is it collectively about this cedar park group that that you enjoy coaching uh the kids they're willing to do whatever they need to do like you know i know they tell the story about how mooney was late but it's funny because that's the exception that's not the rule and i've been in places where it's always piecing it together who's going to be here today and stuff like that and, you know the kids they they come after so obviously they come before school everybody knows about that but uh then they come back after school and we do film or we do whatever we need to do and it's just the the commitment and the buy-in that i've seen from the cedar park kids is just something i've never had anywhere else it's oh. pretty special it, it goes back a long time trust me my i was the youngest of, th- of three boys and we all went through the cedar park system and mm-hmm. i mean shoot going back to the pre-ross era it wasn't necessarily a tradition built upon winning and when that all started yeah i mean it, it's just hard not to buy in to be a winner um, and so collectively with this offensive line group, who would you say? Hmm, I feel like who, you're about to put me on the spot. I know. I am about to put you on the spot. Who would you say is the best actor? Uh, Luca. No Luca. doubt. Luca. That Luke, was Luke no hesitation yeah. on that. There was no hesitation. Luca is the Luca is definitely the guy that uh, is the most entertaining and uh, keeps us all laughing a lot. Well, good. We can give him a 30 minutes up here with an open <laughs> mic, do a little probably comedy would. routine. He probably could. <laughs> um, so, I mean, obviously the non-district was tough. Yep. Uh, coming out of, in, into district now, got that one win and, and, and riding that right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, what's it going to take to go on the road the next two weeks and take care of business? Uh, I think we just need more consistency. Like, we need to get better doing what we do. You know, I think that um, we spent the last two weeks, the bye week, going into Eastview really kind of polishing what we do, trying to create an identity of run the football and uh, play good as an offensive line unit, protect our quarterback. You know, we have a a first-year starter quarterback, so we always talk about how it's very important that we build trust with him, that he can stay in that pocket, that we'll protect him, and that he can deliver the ball on time. If he's worried about people coming to chase him, then we're not doing our job. So 
that's what that's what we need to do as a unit, as, you know, as a team. I just think we need to get more consistent with what we do, and we're going to be all right. Shout out Aiden Arp, too. I'm telling you, as a junior with his first year at varsity quarterback, dude takes care of the football. He does. I think he does a great job he at does. that. He'd love to have that interception back from last week. Yep. Um, and, and, again, uh, just excited to have you in the Cedar Park community. Thank you. Uh, you know, we're, we're totally bought in on this team. And, uh, again, we are a matchup freaking nightmare when we get to the playoffs every I single that. year. I, every, uh, I agree. I mean, we're, get, we're just getting better and better every day, every week. And it's like Coach Q says, we're trying to be 1-0 and every day, and we earn the right to be 1-0 and at the end of the week. Absolutely. Uh, well, again, collectively, we have gone through the entire offensive line group. Don't go far. I have a fun game plan for you guys. So we're going to have to split the O-line up. I don't know how y'all want to do that. Interior versus outers. Innies versus outies. That's what we caught them at receivers. Ah, okay. Uh, beside the fact. We're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. And, again, this is Timberwolf Night in America here live from Alzer's Barbecue, the Willard of Oz, and we'll be right back with more Cedar Park football. You know the Alzer family. They've been involved in Cedar Park sports for years, just as Alzer's Barbecue has been involved in Cedar Park cuisine for years. It's one of a kind, authentic Texas barbecue, brisket, turkey, chicken, lamb, terrific sides and sauces. It's sheer succulence. That's Alzer's Barbecue, next to the CVS on Cypress Creek Road, just west of Old 183. A premier real estate brokerage in Central Texas, Mungia Real Estate's innovative buy-sell process results in their listings selling faster than the Austin average. Their attention to clients sets Mungia apart from other brokerages. With creative marketing strategies, savvy negotiation skills, and a commitment to hard work and excellent customer service. Whether it's residential, single family, multifamily, condos, commercial, or vacant land, Mungia Real Estate knows the Austin market and connects buyers with sellers every day. And they do it with professionalism. Mungia Real Estate at 512-922-4267 or mungiarealestate.com. That's M-U-N-G-I-A. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. Faithful, you know what Metal Shop is. That means we're coming out of halftime. We're about to kick some ASS. Uh huh. Again, thank you, everybody. This is Cedar Park Football on Timberwolf Night in America, the sixth episode this season, live from Alzer's Barbecue at South 183 in Cypress Creek, just behind the CBS. Come on, we got some good barbecue down here, and the Doughboys are in the house. Uh, I'm going to have some real fun with these guys now, as we've got a really fun game planned. And what we like to call this is the Texas largest football stadiums. So you can guess where my mind is going. Uh, there are a lot of big stadiums in the US. Actually 30 years ago, a 65,000 seat stadium would have been among the top 15 largest venues in America. But now 65,000 seat stadium would only be the nation's 59th largest stadium. Of all the states, sports crazy Texas is far and away the leader in the number of size of big stadiums. And two NFL teams, two Major League Baseball teams, and 10 D1 BCS college football programs. BCS, Lord of mercy, this is predated. Um, it combined for a perfect storm for a huge number of stadiums in the Lone Star State. All of the following statements are true. 
Texas is the only state with 18 stadiums of 30,000 seats of greater capacity. Texas is the only state with 16 stadiums of 40,000 or greater capacity. And Texas is the only state with 10 stadiums with 50,000 or greater capacity. And no, oh, wait, if you're wondering, I got one more. Texas is, we, oh, let me go. Texas is the only state with, let's see, eight stadiums with 60,000 or greater capacity. Uh, Texas is by far uh, the, the, the largest st uh, stadium capacity seating in the, in, in the country. And, and stadiums in Texas are so big, in fact, that all the Major League Baseball stadiums in the U.S., only Dodger, Dodger Stadium, if sucked up and plunked down in Texas, would make the list of the state's top ten largest stadiums. And even then, sneaking in at number ten. So you'll notice the list contains only information for non-racing stadiums. The actual largest stadium in the state for large stadiums in Texas is Texas Motor Speedway, just north of Fort Worth. Not surprisingly, this is NASCAR's largest venue, seating in a whopping 191,000 and 192 fans. That's bigger than Talladega. All righty. So what we're going to do, we're going to separate. Our, do we have our teams? Do we have a spokesman from each team? Captain and Davis. There we go. I hear you. So we'll, I've got a list of the top 18 stadiums in, in largest capacity. And so we're going to take turns in going at who's the largest, and professional stadiums included. Non-racing stadiums. So Motor Speedway's out. And circuit. Th they don't play no football at Circuit of the Americas. Come on, bro. They play the other football. Um, okay. So... Who do we have going to go first? Are we doing a rock, paper, scissors? How are we doing this? Oh, see, there is a little bit of... Okay, actually, yeah, seniority rules. Seniority rules. Okay, so we're going with the most seating capacity stadiums. So go ahead and give me your first. Oh, go one more time. Talking to the mic. Ranger Stadium. Ranger Stadium. Okay, so we've got this at Globe Life Park, former home of the Texas Rangers. We might need to update this. It comes in at number 11, 48,114 seating capacity built in 1994. I mean, number 11, it's going to be tough to beat. Davis, what you got? Kyle Field. Kyle, oh my gosh, Aggies. <laughs> Kyle Field, even though they lost to Appalachian State, they still seat 102,733 people. And that is number three overall. So number three and number 11 off the board. The young guys got a whop. I mean, they're about half the seating capacity ahead of you. All right. Coach Bar or excuse me, Team Barksdale, what you got next? AT&T. AT&T. That comes in at number two. Number two. Hold the pinky up. Number two. 105,121, and that's in Arlington. Again, that was built back in 2009. That's where the Dallas Cowboys play. They ba play the Big 12 Championship, the Cotton Bowl, and even the 2011 Super Bowl was there. The Packers versus Steelers. So got the number two and 11 spot. Kyle Field with Davis. Who you got next? NRG. NRG. Us Timberwolves, were familiar with that stadium. We've had some fun in that stadium for sure. Now, granted, I'm telling you, that press box, the press box, it's like 13 stories above the, the field. I'm not a big fan. i got to have the binos for that. Even What was that? Phone a friend? No phone a friend? Nope, they're still sticking with NRG. I'm just kidding. Uh, that's number five in the state. So they've got number three, number five, and NRG holding 72,200, built in 2002, home of the Houston Texans. Barksdale, your play. DKR. Oh. <laughs> DKR, Texas Memorial Stadium, is number one in the state of Texas at 105,213. Built originally in 1924, but thank goodness for all those renovations because now it actually looks like a real stadium. Um, again, that's where the Texas Longhorns play, the professional team in Austin. Next up is going to be the Young Guns. Who you got, Davis? Give me something good. You've already gotten the number three and the number five. 
Minute Maid. Minute Maid. There we go. On my list, down at number 15. A bit, a bit of a slid right there. 41,168 ca seating capacity. That was built in 2000. Again, the home of the Houston Astros. So an opportunity right here. If you hear that, Isaac, that's the door opening for you to take a shot right here. Who you got? Allen ISD. Allen ISD. Just a beautiful stadium that they have. Unfortunately, it does not crack our top 18. It does not crack the top 18. We're going to look back on that and see if that is a missed opportunity. All right, Davis, take a commanding lead. Mc McLean Stadium. Ugh. Okay. At the same time, like, yo, Baylor, still a lot of fun. But McLean... We're sitting at number 12, still in the top 18. That's still points. We're still talking points over here. Again, McLean Stadium for the Baylor Bears. Oh, my goodness. Brad has this one dated at 1950. That was Floyd. That was the, the case. What was that? Ca Floyd Casey Stadium where they had that whole banner taking up the whole end zone. Made no sense. Uh, but, again, this was built probably 2012. Well, we had the inaugural year. Alito. Oh, my goodness, Javelin Guidry took that jet sweep 80 yards to the <laughs> house. That was amazing. But McLean Stadium, number 12. I had that wrong. Number 12 in our seating capacity. All right, Barksdale, you need to dig deep on this one. So we still have numbers number 4, number 6, 7, and 8. Cotton Bowl. The Cotton Bowl. That's right. That, that was... Texas' favorite pastime. Now the Cotton Bowl being moved to AT&T, but the Cotton Bowl is still a stadium, and that comes in at number four. 92,100 seating capacity built in 1930, and you got Big Tex hanging out out front. All right, Davis. Give me something. The American Airlines Center. The American Airlines Center. We're, we're, we're talking football. I'm going to give you one more retry. Whoa, 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 whoa. It, commissioner speaks. The commissioner speaks. I don't want to hear none of that. I get enough at home. I'm going to take it. But they play football in those stadiums. Just ask Coach Ross and Lucas Lovejoy. I need a football. Football. The Sun Bowl. Ooh. Say that one more time. The Sun Bowl. The Sun Bowl. That's a good one. So good, it doesn't even crack our top 18. God, you just hate to see it. Oh, I lied. Uh, uh I need, I need, I need glasses on this one. The Sun Bowl cracking the top 10 at number nine. 51,500 seating capacity in El Paso, built in 1963. Again, home of the UTEP Miners. Okay. No. <laughs> Sophomore, sophomores got jokes. He's good. I like it. I like it. All righty, Barksdale, we need something. We need to dig deep right here. Who you got? The Toyota Center. The Toyota Center. Toyota Center is not on my top 18. That's two blanks. Davis, oh, we're going to go two at-bats left for each group. So we still got a lot, quite a bit left. We still got six, number seven, number eight, number 10, number 13, 15, 17, and 18. No. Nah. All right. There's going to be no Googling over here. Okay. No Googling. Te Timberwolf Te Night America Trivia is honest. <laughs> Texas Tech Stadium. Ooh. Bonus points if you know the name. What's the name of it? <laughs> AT&T Jones. Uh, AT&T Jones, we're at number eight. 60,454 Screaming Red Raiders built back in 1947. They could use some renovations. Okay, hook them horns, please. Please hook them over here. We're in Austin. Okay. Barksdale, two more at-bats. Make something count. What you got for me? Alamo Dome. The a there you go. There you go. <laughs> Gone but never forgotten, the Alamo Dome coming in at number six. 
64,000 built in 1993. That's when your boy was born. That was great. What a fun time that was. All righty, Davis. Davis, come through big right now. You just need to get on the board. There's no way they can catch you. TCU Stadium. Okay, TCU, I'll take it because that is going to be, let's see, is that a Monji? That is number 13. 45,140 screaming horned frogs. I can't believe they can get that many people in that stadium. Built in 1930, rebuilt in 2016. And again, that also hosts the Armed Forces Bowl, for all those people wondering. Uh, Barksdale, I need something big right here. Get me on the board at least. Let's go out with some pride. Let's go out with some pride. Astrodome. The Astrodome. There we go. Astro World coming in at number seven, 62,439. That was built in 1965, and they host no one anymore. It's really sad. What a fun time that was. All right, Davis, victory lap time. Victory lap. Something on the top 18. Don't go out with a goose egg. SMU oh, Stadium. The Shmu. The, the Stangs. SMU comes in at number 17. Gerald J. Ford Stadium. Seating a whopping 32,000. Rice Stadium, that comes in at number 10, 47,000. Also, some that were missed were, let's see, you got the top 10, actually 10 with Rice Stadium. Uh, TDECU Stadium, the host of the Houston Cougars. Uh, they come in at 42,822. Also, not mentioned was uh, the North Texas Mean Green. Mm. It's pretty. It's pretty big. Uh, that is number 18, though, 30,850. So shout out. What are we calling your team name? Okay, you got five seconds on a team name. Te oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I'm still going to give it to them because they won. Shout out. Y'all did win. Excellent. All righty, so we're going to go ahead and take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with the breakdown of next week's road trip to College Station. Again, this is Cedar Park Football live on Timberwolf Night in America from Alzer's Barbecue. We'll be right back. You know the Alzer family. They've been involved in Cedar Park sports for years, just as Alzer's Barbecue has been involved in Cedar Park cuisine for years. It's one-of-a-kind, authentic Texas barbecue. Brisket, turkey, chicken, lamb, terrific sides and sauces. It's sheer succulence. That's Alzer's Barbecue, next to the CVS on Cypress Creek Road, just west of Old 183. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. As the number one Ford volume dealer in Central Texas, Covert Ford has hundreds of new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from. They can even assist you with custom ordering your dream car, truck, or SUV. Since 1909, when you shop at Covert Ford, you're more than just a customer. You're part of the Covert Ford family. Visit CovertFord.com or stop in for a test drive to experience the Covert commitment to excellence. Number one volume sales dealer in Austin based on total new retail sales, Ford Report 2021, Austin, Texas, Metro Market. A premier real estate brokerage in Central Texas, Mungia Real Estate's innovative buy-sell process results in their listings selling faster than the Austin average. Their attention to clients sets Mungia apart from other brokerages. With creative marketing strategies, savvy negotiation skills, and a commitment to hard work and excellent customer service. Whether it's residential, single family, multifamily, condos, commercial, or vacant land, Mungia Real Estate knows the Austin market and connects buyers with sellers every day. And they do it with professionalism. Mungia Real Estate at 512-922-4267 or mungiarealestate.com. That's M-U-N-G-I-A.
welcome back to Cedar Park Football Live from Timberwolf Night in America here from Alzer's Barbecue. We're coming up towards the end of the show. This is not a Brad Cone excursion. We're going to get out a little bit earlier than expected. Give you time to go home and do some homework tonight. Oh, you got morning practice. Okay, yeah. Make sure you get your homework done. Don't they give you like five minutes to do that when you get to class? You got time to get that done. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, well, again, thank you guys so much for hanging out with us here at Timberwolf Night in America. Shout out to Alzer's Barbecue for hosting us as the home of Cedar Park football. Uh, they got great barbecue. Make sure that you make it a point to come down here and support Alzer's Barbecue uh, throughout the week. Now, we're getting towards the end, and I'm going to go ahead and bring up Bo Barksdale to, to seed this next week's game plan because our Timberwolves now coming off of their first district win, the first win of the season. And again, this is gold ball season now. I mean, it's gold ball time. Um, so got a tough road trip going on uh, next week against AM Consolidated. Kind of talk about what th those guys do well over there. Uh, they're big. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our challenge up front offensively is going to be the D-line. They're 6'4", 280, 6'2", 250, 6'1", 250. And then probably about 6'3", about probably 230. And then that's the front line. And obviously the old line's really big. They've always had notorious big old linemen. But our biggest challenge is winning the battle up front on both sides, D-line and O-line. If we can do that, we're going to be fine. Yeah, I mean, it, it's not something that this offense hasn't been accustomed to. I mean, that, that tough non-district schedule. Yeah. I felt like Round Rock, when we got off the butt, I mean, that looked like a bigger program. They had a lot of dudes. Yeah. And our guys handled them just fine. So, yeah. I mean – Momentum has got to be high coming off of that last week, rushing over 150 yards. Oh, yeah. Um, and realistically, I mean, they parallel very similar with Round Rock uh, as far as watching them and, and game planning them. Um, so it looks good for us. Yeah. Real confident for that game plan to work. So we just got to go out and execute. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, you know, Cedar Park, they've done a good job. I mean, that last game, they just established the run game, then, you know, kind of spread it out, got Carter well. Uh, loose a little bit as loose uh, as well as Gavin Choppa, uh, but just kind of speak about the youth of this offense and how much and experience they have, but how quickly they're coming along. Oh yeah, it's, it, you're seeing it change week by week. I mean, you saw the youth in week one in the first half for Cedar Ridge. I mean, a lot of youth there and a lot of mistakes there based upon that. You know, going against Vandergriff, a very mature team. You know, it wasn't very pretty for us. I mean, we weren't ready for that. Uh, then going in Round Rock, a lot of youth in that situation, getting down in the red zone in a high temper environment, uh, and then just too many mistakes based on our youth and not ready for those situations. And then last week, started off with some mistakes youth-wise and then pushed through it and then finally played with their potential. Um, but the good thing is you're seeing it evolve. I know y'all are seeing it upstairs as well. You know, you start watching the film, watching the games progress. You're seeing that chemistry come on. You're seeing the experience settle in. You're starting to see them gain the confidence and operate the offense, operate the defense as well. Yeah. Now, with a, with a long road trip like this, is there anything that changes internally for you guys on getting down there? What time do you all leave for something like this? Uh, you know, the good thing about this program is – a lot of these guys were sophomores, moved up for the playoffs, and this is no different in schedule than going to a playoff road game. I mean, you're going to leave and you got to school at 2, you're going to leave and eat your snack, have lunch when you get there, and have meetings, all that stuff, get focused, and go play the game. And it's, it's kind of like going, like you said, go to ball season. You know, it's, we've done that so much this program, and those young guys have to experience that routine. Now they're just being a bigger part of that routine, but they know what's coming. Right. You know, so I don't think it's be that big a deal. No, and no that they're was, ready for it. That was something that I, I, I really enjoyed. I mean, back in, the, back in the day, Cedar Park went on the road to go play at the Berry Center against Side Creek. And I was a freshman, incoming sophomore. But being in the locker room, just seeing, you know, the day-to-day, -day, I mean, but, but having two of these weeks in the middle of the, of the regular season, it's going to yeah. be great experience for these guys. Uh, definitely hoping for the best. Uh, just hope you guys get off the bus ready to play. Because they're going to be ready for you. We're going to be trying, that's for sure. <laughs> we'll have them ready. That's a long ride for no reason. Well, again, uh, thank you, Coach Barksdale. Thanks for having the guys show up. I know it's a school night. Uh, I know they have a lot of studies to get to, so make sure you guys are, are straight into the books after this. Uh, but, again, just thank you for being a part of this community. So happy to see your son. Uh, All right. Thank you all. Thank you all for everything you do. Oh. We really appreciate it. Shoot, we have too much fun almost. <laughs> Um, well, again, 
Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and have an early sign-off tonight here from Timberwolf Night in America. Um, had a great time talking with the offensive linemen. If you have an opportunity to see them throughout the week, make sure you give them some love. Got two big road games coming up this week, or coming up the next couple weeks for our Timberwolves. Uh, so just really support them. Uh, we're going to need a lot of fans traveling, but if you can't make it, make sure you keep it locked here on the Vibe Live broadcast as Brad Cohn, Cecil Kokenauer, and I, the best dang bomber crew, are going to bring it to you live. Uh, do want to thank this year's Booster Club sponsors. That's Covert Ford, Alzer's Barbecue, Sewell Land Rover and Jaguar, Mission of Hope, Life Family, Reap Financial, TJ Lewis Real Estate, Raising Canes, Kathy Tam Photography, Mungia Real Estate, ROI Sport Performance and Physical Therapy, <laughs> One Stop, Rudy's Barbecue, Army Ant Moving, Majori's Firehouse Subs, and H-E-B. So that is it for this episode of Timberwolf Night in America. And again, uh, we're...